welcome to the April 24th, 2023 edition of a Rochester Select Board meeting. Um, this time, Doom is not attending, so I'm back. We got two of us again. Um, we have posted this agenda in three different places and the website, so we are conforming to the open meeting law. And it has been emailed to all interested parties as well. Um, due to the fact that um, I was in attendance but only listening in, I had a, a poor signal when I was away, so uh, my iPad didn't work, so I was using the phone. So I did not participate as a select board member in that meeting, our last meeting, and Dune is now away. Uh, we're going to skip the prior meeting minute approval until next time when all of us are here. That would be the meeting from April 10th. Uh, do we have uh, Martha Slater here? Yep, she's here. You're on mute, Martha. Hi. Um, is this the time for me to talk about 4th of July? You might as well get it going. Okay, great, thank you. Um, this is my annual formal request for permission from the select board to um, have the 4th of July celebration. Um, some of it I organize and some of it I just sort of oversee, you know. Um, anyway, um, it would be on, it, it will be on Tuesday, July 4th. And um, what I have organized so far is that the, um, this year's theme will be hometown happiness. And um, it will include um, the Independence Day Dash uh, 5K run, which the um, Ridgeline Collective and Pierce Hall Community Center are going to co-anchor. Um, and um, the tennis tournament down on the town tennis courts that um, um, uh, the Pruxmas, Evelyn and Walt Pruxma, are going to, are going to organize. And then, of course, the parade. Um, and Crystal, Crystal Lapel uh, has let me know that the... the um, um, fire department will be doing the um, fire uh, the uh, traffic control at either end of the village during the parade, and also um, after the parade, um, along with the barbecue on the park, um, there's going to be um, the whoever shows up jam band is going to play on the bandstand, and Linda Anderson has um, volunteered to um, organize games for kids like she did last year. So there'll be, you know, things like this happening throughout the village. And um, I'm hoping that um, the select board is okay with that. And um, the only thing it will cost the town is the usual things where I um, I asked, um, it, the money comes from the recreation committee budget. And um, Julia Kristen has, um, you know, I send the bill to them um, as far as um, the paper and envelopes and stamps for sending out the invitation letters and also ordering the three trophies and that's it, you know, for first, second and third place. Um, so um, I'm hoping that um, that that's okay with everybody. And I checked to make sure that the, it will definitely be on the, because it's on a Tuesday, I checked to make sure that it won't be on a Monday because, you know, sometimes government holidays are on Monday. So I called the post office being that they're, you know, a government organization. And they told me that they, their um, schedule from the government came that they were supposed to be open on Monday the 3rd and closed on Tuesday the 4th. So I went with that, hoping because of course it is the 4th of July, it should be on the 4th. So anyway, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so um, yeah, with, with no surprises, um, it being very routine as far as expenses are concerned. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if any of the, those costs have gone up from last year, but uh, I think the stamps are a little more than they were last year. I think postage stamps have gone up a little, but anyway. Yes, correct. Okay, sorry. I move that uh, we allow Martha to spend her parade budget. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go, Martha. Thank you Aye. very much. I appreciate it. It's been over 20 years that I've been doing this, so it's I've gotten so I know what I'm doing, but still. <laughs> Thank you. We definitely appreciate your efforts. Thank you. We did, we did up that budget last year yeah, we, I to we did a accommodate bit. the cost. 
increases. Okay. Um, speaking of Martha Slater, let's move on to the second thing on our new business. It's Slater Skate Space Land Transfer. Correct. Um, Hi, Dean. Been a busy week <laughs> in that department. Um, I called Evan today, and he's not on Zoom because... Uh, Cricket and I have come up with a different plan, mm -hmm. um, creating an easement uh, between two already surveyed posts that basically severs all of the uh, the land that has been built on her, the property that's the, the skate space that part that has been built on her property and also the drainage um, that is included, which is what we need for skate space, um, and can creating I, creating an easement. Can I hop in? Go. Um, <laughs> just to be super clear, it's Martha's land, so it's Martha's decision. Um, <clears throat> I chatted with Martha about an easement probably six, eight months ago. I think it was last summer. We had a nice talk. She was. Um, amenable to an easement sounded like a good plan hadn't really heard too much of what was going on since um, Dean looped me in this week and said hey everybody's thinking about a land transfer and I said really that okay well, if that but then um, it sounded like the cost which is understandable of a land transfer is one I'm not sure what Martha feels and she's the one that gets to decide it's her land and two it's it's a, you know, it's a lawyer on each end, it's another survey. I, I kind of said, well, you know, where, where did the easement idea go? And, and, and Dean also discussed talking about um, actually even trying to get the paved part of the skate space off of Martha's land, which is certainly an option that's on the table. But um, I mentioned, you know, that doesn't actually solve the entire problem because there's drainage structures for the skate space that are still on Martha's land. Even if you take the asphalt part away, there's still some infrastructure that goes with the skate space that would still. So I um, took a quick peek back at Martha's survey that Norm Smith did when they parsed off the skate space from Martha's lot and, and noticed some two already defined points, basically the back corner of Marv's lot and the back corner of the adjacent lot on the south side. And, and those are certainly already defined points recorded in that survey, recorded in the land records of the adjacent survey, so it would be really quite simple, um, as far as I could tell, to kind of just define the, the land west of, of those points in a paragraph or two paragraph easement that gets recorded, just like you record easements for septic disposal. Actually, the town sewer line is in that area, too, so there's, there's all sorts of, I've got some other pictures here too. There's all sorts of kind of town infrastructure that, that occurs on that little trapezoid part of the skate space, obviously, that the town sewer line is there, which obviously has its own separate easement. Some of the drainage structures for the skate space run across there, and it also kind of, that line basically follows the toe of the slope, which is something Martha, Martha and I had talked about as being kind of a topographic defining feature as, you know, that lower terrace versus the upper terrace. And, she had, she had said, you know, that lower terrace is definitely just let it continue to be used in perpetuity as it's being used by the town. So I guess my just guidance to Dean was why, why throw the easement option away so quickly for a more expensive land transfer option if Martha's okay with an easement and the town's okay with an easement. It certainly seems like a good option to me. So I guess I was just re-introducing re, uh, that option into the mix because I don't think it's nearly as pricey as a full land transfer. It doesn't require a survey. Um, I, I, I think it's a, a decent option, but um, certainly it's up to Martha. The, the benefit being we don't have to have two lawyers in a survey. Um, we don't have to subtract any part of skate space. Um, Martha doesn't have to subtract from her lot right and it's um it's i did talk to evan and he he's the reason he's not on zoom is that i basically said to him 
let us figure this out and then you know and he is offered if if the the board decides to do the land transfer to do it at a reduced rate that's not what we want to do anymore we would rather have the easement well, and, and i think martha and, should and be i think part i think martha um, she and know, i have talked about an easement right so. and her her decision is is really the ultimate end of the you know what she wants to do well um excuse me um do i understand dean that you agree with cricket that the easement's probably the better way to go in your opinion yes okay well i i agree with that as well and i'm perfectly willing to agree to it um i was very glad to give that land for the skate space all those years ago and um i i love looking down there whatever the season and seeing kids and families down there. I mean, it gets quite a bit of use. It really does, even though, of course, it needs s some work right now. But it, it's still in, you know, usable shape, and it gets use, and uh, kids really like it. You know, um, I'm perfectly willing to sign. You know, I don't. I assume I have to sign something for an easement or whatever when you get it um, written up or whatever. I'm not sure, but I'm willing to agree to it. Yeah, that, that's how I remember chatting with you about it, Martha, and I really appreciated our chat, but I'm always one to kind of try to figure out the lowest cost, simplest solution that achieves everybody's goals, and I think an easement does that, so I, and if Martha feels that way too, then I don't know why making it more expensive and more complicated is necessarily worth it. If, if the goals are achieved by an easement, and it's simple and low cost, then... A couple points to make here. Town doesn't own the school property, so you really need to be having this discussion with the school. This isn't school property. This is oh, the town business the skate space. Okay. Yeah. okay. It has nothing to do with school property. Okay. Yep. Um, it's the town property that, actually, I talked with Julie about it, was still sort of on the parcel map part of, um, <laughs> that was another mistake that had been made at the parcel mapping level, but she got that corrected, that it, it was still sort of shown as part of Martha's lot, but Julie emailed the parcel map consultant, and I think they fixed that I, to show it as two separate lots. I just, as I got board, a we had too. mentioned that we thought that we preferred to keep it clean and have a land transfer rather than an easement. Um, Martha will be paying uh, property taxes on a piece of property that she's allowing someone else to use. When she goes to sell her property someday, she will have that easement, that, that blemish of an easement on her deed. Um, th those are just all factors that need to be you know, revealed to all the parties because yeah. we don't have lawyers to uh, inform people when you're just going for an yeah. easement. Um, so. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, but go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. No, I was just going to say, I hadn't thought about that. I mean, I, I will agree to either one, but um, just, you know, um, because I want the skate space to, to be there and be you know, used, and I certainly don't need that piece of property. I hadn't thought about the fact that someday if I sell the property, I've owned it for 38 years, so I keep forgetting. Um, you know, anyway, um, I'll agree to whatever the board and, and um, Dean and, and Cricket Crick come up with and, and can agree on. My concern about the land transfer is I voiced it to you um, this week or last week um, that um, there's money that needs to come out I'm um, come into t into this it basically uh, if it's a land transfer I, my understanding is that the town needs a lawyer Martha needs a lawyer and we need it surveyed and Martha shouldn't have to pay for and so she was she was very adamant in in donating this long ago that I've donated this property I don't feel like I she should um, Absolutely not. Right. Not. So um, it also comes down to um, um, where the funds are going to come from to pay two lawyers and a surveyor. Um, I just got one question on the original. Maybe Martha can answer this and maybe you can. I don't know. On the original 
Jeff, was there ever any clause put in there that it reverts back to the original landowner if it's no longer used as a skate space? It's an entirely new lot on Right, I realize that, but yeah. was there anything ever, do you know? I mean, I don't, I don't know, I'm just wondering. And and if you go with an easement, I would think that that would be a clause that you'd want to put in there. She, I think it was an outright gift was, to the town, as I understand it. But I'd Yeah, have to that, that could be, I don't know, I was just asking that question. And the other thing, I, if, if you do go with an easement, I, I think that it would be permanent as long as that space was used as a skate space and then it would revert back to Martha as her land or whoever owned the house. Yeah, the it's language that way, I think. would be important. Yeah, I mean the language that you use here is going to be important down the road, I think. Um, but I would... don't recall anything that Frank, you know, on the, in the original paperwork that we did all those years ago, I don't recall right. anything about it reverting, although maybe it was. I, I haven't got that paperwork in front of me. I'm sorry. Right. No, that's that's quite all right, Martha. I was just questioning that. And I was wondering if there was a, a revert back to you if it was no longer used as a recreational area for the community. Um, that was all. It was just a question. But maybe if we go with an easement, that should be put in there, that that part would be reverts back to her use or that lot itself you know what i'm saying dean yeah i yeah. actually i think the wording that i would use i'm not a lawyer but right the easement of the use of of the recreation area in perpetuity basically right that it continues to the next owner right the, that easement. A sewer line easement going right so um yeah I, that's I what, think what, my, my, what I'm saying is if it's no longer a skate space, say 30 years down the road, skate space is gone, right. uh, that it just reverts back to her, I would think that the easement would no longer be an issue. I would issue. think that, that's an Evan question, but it could probably be written into I would think something easement. like that should be written in there for that case, and then there's no gray area on that in the future, but I think the easement would work fine. And so, I, I want to be clear, too, that I don't want to muddle the water, so if, if the town and Martha, who are the two parties that are if they prefer the land transfer that's fine i just wanted to bring the easement option back up as a low cost thing. to be to tell you the truth an easement is my prefer preferred thing but i i wasn't going to disagree with the other if that's what everybody else wanted okay from discussions yeah. with her personal discussions yeah. so frank are you saying that the entire parcel would revert back to Mars? No, I, I was asking the question of whether or not it was ever put out that way because Martha donated the property for the use town. for recreational use towards a skate space, basketball court, whatever you want to call it. If there was anything in the original agreement that stated it would revert back to her lot if it was no longer used in that way. And that's that was all I was asking. I I don't not that I knew not that I care. I mean, I just was wondering if think, that was the case. I think of the it. original was a true land transfer, where it, it was that it, it was property. totally gifted to the town. As far as I, yeah. I mean, in that way, yeah, okay. Yeah. But I, I would. But think moving if, forward, I think that's an important language. If you went with the easement option, right, you should write in it. it, it easements, the language of them does matter greatly. What is it being used for? You know, in continued use and perpetuity of, of that use, and you define that existing use, and you define um, all of the existing infrastructure that's on it, and it's, you know, repair, replacement, maintenance of that infrastructure, but no more, you know, things like that. You yeah. can make it super clear so it's a, so it doesn't encumber it more, encumber that property more than it needs to. Right, and, and that's, that's what I'm getting at, Cricket. I'm, I'm not yeah. trying to, yeah. And I mean, for Martha's, you know, there is, you could say it, oh, it's a, it's a, a stain on the property, but I, I mean, reducing it in size by almost a half is, I, I, it's totally up to Martha. I would go with her preference. She's well, the one with the original generosity to, to right. give. Yeah. So. I, I don't have a problem with that. And to tell you the truth, when I bought that house in 1985, I was astonished to find out after I signed the paperwork that I owned that field down there because it doesn't look like it belongs to the property and no one had mentioned it to me when I was shown it by the real estate agent or anything. So 
And, and for a number of years, uh, I had little kids in three jobs and it was very hard to get down there to mow it. So it didn't get mowed as often as it should have. That's back when I could mow things. And um, so I didn't have a real problem with with giving it to someone who would take care of it in, in honor of that little girl who died, et cetera. That seemed like a, a good use for the property, much better than I could do with it. So. Who writes up the easement? You'd have to have Evan do it. I, Evan. I, I can yeah. reach out. I mean, if, if, the, if that is the decision to do the easement, then I would, I would, because he's offered, you know. A, and you have those funds to cover that. I we think do, it would still have to come out of the ARPA. Yeah. Right. It would yeah. just be a lesser lesser amount. Right. So yeah. instead of five or 7000 for two lawyers and a surveyor, be we're dealing that. with one yeah, if lawyer. That. If yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And, so and Martha, when you talk to Evan, just make sure that that language is in there that it reverts back to that lot if well, no he, longer he used should for sit it. with Martha and figure out exactly what she yeah, wants for language because we should protect that yep. protect her for that exactly I mean I think that's, that that's um, a standard you thing. Yeah, he's offered JC because she lives right. close by and um, maybe I can set up a meeting with JC and Martha and be a part of that and yeah kind of yeah, let me know if you need me to help be there with you. I mean, okay. I'd, yeah, I think a representative you. from the town and Martha and yeah. Evan and a rep from and, Rick. And I just think. to make sure that Martha's covered there. Exactly. And, and then when if it's no longer used as a skate space, it can revert back to her. Um, if you guys are if you guys are setting up a meeting, it needs to be someplace that I can get in because I can't do stairs. And you'd be more than welcome to come to my house or whatever you would like to do. I think we'll probably come to your house, Martha. Okay. Just just give me a call and let me know when you guys figure out what you're planning to do. I thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, town thanks you too, Martha. Thank you, Martha. Wonderful. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, Cricket. Okay, we have a path. Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Um, we have uh, a driveway permit for 2600 North Hollow Road. Um, that is a vacant lot just uh, just beyond the uh, North Hollow Farm uh, in, in the dip there. Oh yeah. And um, so we have an opinion from John Champion. And so I propose that we accept this unless you have discussion. Uh, John was good with it, so I second the motion. All in favor? All right. All right. And I don't know where this ever gets signed or anything, but it is publicly accepted. And yet another driveway cut. We have, this one is a, a double. It's a two. Yeah. Um, it is two lots that are uh, located near and near and or on the uh, Greyhawk Asset Access Road. And John has a letter with that one too. John Champion yep. um, has lent his opinion here. about. He's got his hand scratching. We can read it. Uh, and I will read it. The two <laughs> proposed driveway cuts off the access road. I found the town ditch is adequate for stormwater runoff, but it is not adequate to accept a 15-inch culvert. The applicant will have to ditch the town road in order to make the stormwater runoff system work properly. I think they're requesting an 18-inch eight, 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 inch inch culvert. I, I think that's going to be the standard from now on anyway. Yep. Um, so with those um, those notes, we and can go ahead and approve these two. You, you may want to mention that they those lots don't border the town road, and they did receive permission from Great Hawk Owners Association back in 2004. They granted 30-foot access points for those lots. Just Part of the subdivision. The so I move that we approve both of these driveway access permits. 
I second it. All in favor? All right. And it takes care of driveways for tonight. Next on our list is a letter from Jan McCann. Um, she is wearing her shelter team hat tonight, and she is requesting funds for a volunteer recognition celebration. Um, recognizing volunteers for their work and commitment is important to all organizations. The shelter team leaders want to acknowledge the diligence, loyalty, and willingness of the volunteers that serve our community. Um, we also want to um, acknowledge all the diligence, loyalty, and willingness of the volunteers. Um, but at this time, we're not exactly sure where we would be able to pull the funds for a meal, um, a, a volunteer recognition meal for 12 people. Um, so I'm going to kind of look into this a little bit later, but um, we would be more than happy to possibly plug it into a future budget if that's something that uh, is requested to be done on an annual basis. But at this point in time, we just don't have anything pinpointed in any of our budgets for this. So I'm going to forward this, do a little research, but I'm not quite sure in these tough budget times that we're going through if we're going to be able to pluck out a $250 um, monetary donation for volunteer recognition. Not that we oh, don't man. love our volunteers. We certainly do. <laughs> um, excuse me, Pat. Yes. Pat, excuse me. Would it be yes. correct for me to for me to write that um, the board will look into into um, a possible source for funds for this and table the the issue till later? You got it. Okay. Thank you. Pat, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Is this request specifically for the shelter team, or yes. does this include all volunteers in the town? No, 12 just, people. Just so I'm assuming team. that's all just the shelter team. Okay. Next on our list, we have um, a request as uh, started a couple meetings ago about changing the name of um, what is now called a road off of Sky Hollow. It's called Valley View Road, and it is a dead end. So the definition of a road is um, a thoroughfare that connects two points. And since this one is not, the uh, landowners on that road are claiming that they have a lot of people driving on it because they they see it as a road but then they decide they determine that it doesn't go anywhere so they turn around and go back so they have a lot of drive bys um, so they're asking to change the road uh, valley view road to valley view drive i did <laughs> pull off definitions of um roads and drives and terraces and I happen to live on a loop, but there was no <laughs> there was no definition for that one. But um, and it was interesting. Um, this this could fall under the category of a drive or a terrace, um, but drive would work for it. And um, so I'm not quite sure if we've done all of our research. If we have to warn sure. this or not. I don't I don't believe so because I think it's a private road. It's not a town yeah. It's road. not even a public road. It's not a public yeah. road. I think. And they want to change the name for Valley View Drive, and I don't think there's any... And they would be responsible for putting up a new sign right. uh, on themselves. Right. So exactly. I move that we accept this. Change um, from Valley View Road to Valley View Drive. I would second that. All in favor? All right. Aye. Right. So we will drop a letter to Mary Ellen and... Um, Sandy Webster, and uh, let them know that uh, we do not have a problem with that. Now, they also do have responsibility to report this to the 911 address so that the ambulance does not go to the wrong spot. So, and they are aware of all of the particulars they need to do to make this stick. Yeah. We cleared out with Angus anyway. I yeah, I think we did. I think we went through Angus on that. 
so that is it for our new business and we will move on to our departmental reports and the first one on that list is the library you're up Tony. Okay, so you want to start with this or? well i assume pat you and frank read the, the yes. letter that was sent and yes. basically we just want to keep you appraised on what the current thinking is on what can and cannot be included in this uh, capital projects grant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know Frank was at the meeting here at Pierce Hall last week mm -hmm. where they were talking about the municipal energy grants that are going to be available. Uh, and perhaps the work that uh, Jeff has talked about um, would be appropriate for that grant, but that's also federal money. So it's looking like um, any sort of replacement of the cladding and the weatherization projects are, wouldn't probably be funded by either of those. Um, so that you know may have to come from town funds or some other way to fund that, but it doesn't look like federal money via state grants um, would be an appropriate way to go. Do you have funding to cover the new roof? That would be an appropriate um, but, part of a capital projects grant. So that is definitely would be a green light for you since yes. you know, it's been deemed that the roof is in need, need of serious care. And, and the uh, recommended that standing seam would be a good replacement for it historically. Yes. Um, We've gotten one of two estimates we asked for, and the, the estimate that came in at this point is $79,000. Um, so that would be something we would certainly put in the capital projects grant. Right. Um, also looking at that sagging um, area there on the second floor, yep. uh, topping off the insulation once the roof is replaced, um, and probably replacing all those fancy wooden posts um, <laughs> for the ADA ramp, which are failing. Uh, and fixing more of them just doesn't make financial sense. Um, we've spent over $100 a post already on the ones that have been replaced. Um, so those are the things right now that look appropriate for that grant. Um, but doing the things that we talked about the last time we met with you doesn't look like they would be approved. So I would uh, I would go back to um, Greg and um, see if he could recommend a contractor that specializes in historic preservation to see if you could get an opinion from that person. Um, we, at one time, we, we had such a contractor right in our valley, but no longer, but... Um, Are you talking about someone that would mill, custom mill, Someone that would that understand would what Greg is looking for and, and what you're looking for. Someone that could make it work so that the clapboards are either still, you know, the same or exactly what, what you had. Um, there, there are contractors out there that specialize in historical buildings. Yeah. So maybe I would take Greg to the next level and see if he can help you uh, meet his adverse effects problems. <laughs> I mean, we can ask, but as his letter states, they're fairly comfortable that the moisture problem I saw that. has has been solved by the flashing we did last but year. But we still have rot to address and repair, correct? Well, the rot, rot is primarily three window sills, and that would go into the grant. Right. Yeah, that's about it. But just a paint job would paint not sold. be approved as part correct. of correct. a capital right. project. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a chance after I got Doreen's letter, I haven't had a chance to talk with Jeff. Um, Jeff has his hand up. He does, yeah. yeah. Let him let him speak then. I haven't had a chance to talk with him. So, what about say it. you, Jeff? Um, I'll lower my hand first. Um, 
you know, there were a number of things that uh, I would take issue with, with the report from the architect uh, for the Preservation Trust folks. Um, you know, I I have found someone who can mill the 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 uh, decorative uh, mill work for the building. Um, no pricing has been provided on that yet. Um, the you know the real difficulty with fixing those windows in place is is how how to flash uh, the window opening so that we don't have water running behind a weather resistive barrier. Um, the, you know, the, if the cladding had to stay the same, and I really don't see why clabbered is acceptable on a first floor and not on a second or a, a vice versa. Um, but the, the thing that, uh, is really against the uh, current building practice and building science is to smush two pieces of wet wood together and hope for the best. Um, and that's what we have in that building right now. Um, we really need to create a separation so that the physics can work and the cladding wets and dries at roughly the same rate on the inside and the outside. Um, so I, you know, my thought was that I would go back to that uh, estimate and adhere as closely as I can to um, their uh, recommendations, but I don't want to compromise on creating whether uh, an appropriate drainage plane um, for that building. It just kicks a can down the road at great cost. So maybe since there's a weatherization aspect to that part of the plan, maybe that would be more appropriate to go into the municipal um, energy grants that are at about the same time um, and not put it in the capital projects grant, get the roof taken care of and those other things and put the whole cladding, insulating part in the municipal energy grant. Who owns the library? The trustees. I did, did reach out to Two Rivers, uh, Matakwichi, uh, this week and ask them uh, where we or how we go about a level two audit to get um, some of this, the, it was the MERP um, grants um, that would require a level two audit, um, which is essentially an audit similar to what the libraries had twice before. Um, yet the, uh, the duration and time that has passed um, means that those audits will not work for um, this current grant application. We'd have to do it over again. I was also counseled that we would likely only get um, support from the state for one project um, and that uh, I should be looking at prioritization there. Um, frustrating thing is that the library is not one of our big energy users. Um, uh, you know, they, if we were going for bang for the buck, we'd be looking at the garage um, and uh, the town office. But of course, the town office is kind of entwined in the high school and versus the office and the office versus the high school. So um, uh, there's a lot of places I could work. Um, I continue to look at the uh, the library and uh, also. Um, I think we should uh, come up, up with numbers for a fix to the town garage. I also sat in on the seminar that was presented last week at, for MERP, M-E-R-P, um, and a question was asked and answered where um, these buildings have to be municipal town-owned buildings. Um, someone was pretty specific about their library and um, they said that if it's not owned by the town, it wouldn't qualify for this particular grant. Well, since um, our library is a municipal town building, shouldn't be an issue. Okay. It's not owned by the trustees. No, no. Okay. No, there have been multiple legal opinions. Okay. It's every year, it's in the town report under what the town owns, the library and the contents. Okay. It's insured 
under the town building's insurance policy and you can, can't insure a building you don't own. We, can't, we can take that to the state when we apply for the grant. And like Dune it. knows. Um, maybe we, you guys need to talk with Dune. I know we, we just did, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of work to the library just mm -hmm. 10 years ago, so. I'm just saying what was discussed in this meeting. Yeah. Um, they also did say that they, like, like Jeff mentioned, that they would give priority to old leaky buildings first. <laughs> I don't know who wants to compete for that prize, right. but um, and they also had a had an analysis on all the municipal buildings in every one of the towns, and um, Rochester was in the middle, not not super efficient and not super inefficient. So um, that was interesting that you know Big Brother has been watching our utility bills. Mm -hmm. So anyway, just wanted to clarify what the thinking is right now. Um, if whoever the library director is, is going to be writing the grant, what we have found out mm -hmm. so far from Vermont historic um, preservation folks, the state librarian, what would be approved and what would not be approved. Just want to keep you in the loop. Okay. Well, <laughs> If we get a new roof, that that would be a big plus, okay. And then we'll we'll see what we can do to work out the rest of it. The yeah. other part of this, though, was um, the inspection of the roof. Um, not everything that was supposed to be done was done. Um, don't know where to go with that. Uh, we didn't contract it, no. yes. so I'm I'm not quite. Yeah. Well, we didn't hire them. We signed the contract. We agreed when you hired them to promise to pay them. Um, mm -hmm. So you want you you're asking us to get in touch with them and ask them why they didn't do what they were asked to do. You're asking us to do that. Yes. I mean. Okay. We did, the the nobody at the library signed the contract. We didn't pay them. I'm just letting you know that when I spoke I, with I the, the estimator, the things that I spoke to the estimator about that sh were supposed to be done, the things that were not done. Making sure that you're aware. And that was the Vermont construction company right so they did not go into the attic to locate the leak and fix the simple leak as was discussed with the estimator so although they inspected and let us know that all of the fasteners are old and brittle and in jeopardy they didn't locate where the ones that were actually gone that are letting moisture into the attic and plug the holes. Okay. Who was the estimator? Vermont Construction Company. Thank you. Yeah, I think that was like a thirteen hundred and fifty dollar bill or something. Yeah. So I don't know if, if that's 15, already been paid, 15. if there's any leverage to... I think we paid it already. I think it was paid last month. And is this the appropriate time to thank you for your service? You yep. have another couple months, I'm happy. A couple months, oh, we've got time. You will talk to you July again. July the 1st. We'll talk to you again, I'm sure. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, highway not here. We're assuming things are going yeah, well. Yeah, things are. He's getting ready for Mud starting to scrape, scrape roads and waiting Clean on ditches. Yeah, he likes to get them done here pretty soon. He scraped some, but he hasn't done the actual really scrape job that he wants to do because he's it's a little early yet. Yeah. Yeah. So he's kind of waiting. 
I, uh, I remember when we had the April 15th flood and the trucks were driving up and down Brook Street. <laughs> it was too early for them, that was for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, Anybody ever wondered why the May 15th exists? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> why. <clear. laughs> I saw it myself. Don't Energy coordinator, <laughs> utilities operator is not here. I'm well assuming that I, water I and did sewer. speak with him, and the walk around went well. Good. Things, things went really well. It was great. They had the buggy to bop around the village and saved a lot of time, a lot of walking around. So and everything looked good. The, he did have a conversation about thinking about getting some new valves, but after looking at things over and talking with some other folks that have the same type of equipment that we have, uh, that our valves are in as good a shape as anybody else's and, and that they've got a lot longer life left in them than okay. what he thought originally. So mm -hmm. he was happy with that and he wasn't looking forward to anything else. Yeah. So Perfect. He felt good about it. I think we have Jeff on the line. Uh, yeah, I'm on the line. Um, basically, uh, giving you the report I have. I've been off for a little over a week here, so I'm just getting caught back up. <clears throat> so, everything's good then. We're good. Grant updates? I don't have anything this week. Good. Um, we did get that one for the Rogers Brook 56. Culvert number 37. Yep. Yep. 56,000. Yeah. We were granted that. And we are waiting to see if we get a class two grant to couple that with for the Bethel Mountain Road. And if we do get the, get the two combined, we'll be doing that work Where this summer. number 37? Rogers, Rogers Brook, Brook, Brook on Bethel, Bethel Mountain, Camp Brook Road. And we'll be looking at daytime shutdown for that for probably a week. We don't know when we'll do it or if we will do it this year or next year, but it, it's going to happen And mm -hmm. because traffic control is just so expensive. It just costs so much for that. Right, and it does delay and, the project and it, quite and a bit. And so we, we close, shut it down for six seven hours a day and then open it for the evenings and commuting times but that'll come later we're not sure if that's going to happen this year or not okay under old business um we do have the emergency plan from larry pleasant we're going to forward that um until we have a full board and we'll take a look at it and sign it. Um, there's also a couple things that uh, Larry Pleasant has to also do to present it to us. Um, he needs a certification. So um, we're moving that a little further down the road. Um, and, excuse, excuse me, Pat. L-E-M-P, the, the uh, acronym there, what does that stand for? For some reason, I can't remember. Local Emergency Management Plan. Okay, thank you. And am I correct that the following item, road name change, was the thing you already discussed? Yes. Okay, thank you. And that, that local emergency management plan um, needs to be updated every year, I believe. Yep, every year. And now we're ready for some public comment, new business, concerns, discussions. Well, I did do one thing. Uh, I called for the fertilizer on the park and that should be getting here. They said they'd do it this week, so hopefully they'll show up. If you see some action, just let me know so I can let John know that put the picnic tables out in the benches. I told him not to do it until after it was fertilized, so we'll get that out after. And I also wanted to make a note, we have a vote coming up on May 2nd. So everybody uh, plan on coming out on May 2nd and voting for the school budget. We have um, 
uh, a vote for um, whether or not the town would like to have cannabis retail in town. So there's, uh, there's lots of neat things to vote for. So come on out here. We'll see you on May 2nd. Anybody else? I've got four things. Step right up. Here and we I go. I don't know if this is the appropriate this place to appropriate bring time. everything. Come okay, on. so um, if I could just run through my quick list and then we can go back. I have uh, the, if the four things are number one, uh, the use of cones by private individuals in front of their homes, orange cones. Is that something? I find it confusing uh, when neighbors put orange cones in the middle of the road. Uh, if it's not town related, if the town didn't put those cones out, if they're just trying to slow traffic. Um, the second one are neon signs. I don't know what our local rules are about neon signs, but I feel like there's more recently at our skip mark. <laughs> um, I just don't know what the rules are, and especially with signage in Vermont and how we like to try to keep it to a minimum, I, I question that. Um, this is sort of a bigger thought. I'm wondering about the health of our forests um, and trees in general. On top of Hawk Mountain where I live, even in my own yard, I find that the tree health seems poor. And I'm not sure if that's monitored by our town. Um, and in the event that there was a fire, how quickly that would spread on top of the mountain if the tree health isn't good. So it's a, just a concern I have. And then the last one I have is about Airbnbs and what rules exist for them right now. I have someone looking at property directly across the street from me um, as potentially a second home. He already has another home here too, a yurt up in the mountains somewhere. And during COVID, it was extremely stressful. The number of places that were being run as Airbnbs and the people that came in and abused them, uh, the noise level, the uh, just the number of vehicles. Um, does our town have any policies regarding Airbnbs? Um, I spoke to a gentleman who has property in Hancock and is being forced to have sprinklers put into his place. Do we require that of our B&Bs that they have sprinklers installed? Um, and then also use of fireplaces and outdoor fires. So those are my things. <laughs> uh, you live in Hawk? I do. Okay, well Hawk has some pretty specific bylaws. Um, so, um, to address some of them, um, if private homeowners are putting cones into the town roads or the town right-of-ways, um, it should be noted to the town right. and, and the town crew will definitely be addressing it. So um, if you did see that happening, you could call Frank. You can call the Please office. Don't. <laughs> Please He's don't. the road commissioner. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, unless the town does it, it's not uh, appropriate to do. I, I'm not sure if there's any rules against it, but I, I would have to look at that. But um, it's not opposed. You know, people aren't you know, supposed to do that, but if, if occasionally somebody might just to slow people down if they're having a group of people around or something like that. But, you know, other than that, it's just not supposed to be out there. Um, as far as the forest goes, that's really not anything we monitor. There's a lot of national forest around here, <clears throat> and the Forest Service keeps a pretty good eye. We do have a forest warden, um, as far as fires go, that you have to get a burning permit at certain times of year. Uh, depending on the weather, uh, Airbnb we don't have any any rules per se as a town at this point. We've talked about it, but we haven't addressed it. Neon signs. Uh, there is a, a sign ordinance that's monitored by the zoning board, um, so that would be the planning commission would have jurisdiction over signs. Um, 
but there's also state rules on signage as right. well but the town does have its own sign ordinance in neons there is an issue with them i believe in town notice i mean there's window neons are one thing but large neons i think are outlawed in town i believe i don't know for a fact but you'd have to check with the sign ordinance and that you can get a copy of that in the town office it's in the town plan in the zoning regs so regarding the airbnbs is that something we're going to look at as a town coming I, up or? we've talked about it we're kind of on the fence about it because it's a hard thing to try to come up with rules about because it's a gray area for everyone i mean there's to me it's issues of you make people that have hotels and everything go through all these fire codes and the marsh fire marshals and and they have to do inspections and all that but these airbnb people they don't have to do that there's a whole so it's a gray area for towns and i think every town is wrestling with the same thing at this time we're kind of hoping the state kind of steps in and does some monitoring on that so we've discussed it some but we haven't really figured out any path forward with that so i so i don't know what to problem. tell you on that and a lot of the places around here that's what's happened is people have bought them and used them for airbnbs mm -hmm. and, and great hawk has is, has had discussions is, on this issue as yeah. well it's kind of a it's a state problem but yet every town is dealing with it at, and with the same mm -hmm. question marks i mean some towns have tried to deal with it i think but there's a <laughs> it's a really a kind of a gray area of trying to make rules on what people can do with their house if they have a house if they want to have somebody stay in it and run it out that way martha you know. has her hand up yeah martha oh i'm sorry uh, i I can't tell who it was who was the lady who asked all those questions just now. I, I I didn't recognize the voice and I can't see her on Zoom. So who who is that? She's very shy. Excuse <laughs> <laughs> me, what? <laughs> State your name. This is I'm Anjanette Lemack. What? Anjanette Lemack. Jeanette. And what's the last name? Anjanette. Anjanette. Lemack. Call, call Kristen tomorrow and she'll straighten you out, Martha. Yeah, I can help you tomorrow, Martha. I'll talk. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> thank you. Sorry to bother you. Those are great, great questions. Yeah. yeah. Also, the state of Vermont is looking into the Airbnb issue. It's a, it's it's being debated in the legislature. Um, maybe I just, uh, if someone's going to do build something by land intentionally across the street for me to build something like that, I don't want to stay. I want to start looking for somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Hawk has a bunch of covenants there too that you have to have an approved building. But still, right? Right. It's still. So, it's still. But yeah, I understand what you're we saying. We could all I mean, find ourselves in the same situation we're all in the next same door. Board. I mean, it's not. Any I different. have two Airbnbs in my neighborhood. So. And you're getting a the, new one too, right? Yeah, my dogs are. You know, they have to. They have to discover new friends, <laughs> and then the next weekend there's more new friends. <laughs> City of Burlington just passed an ordinance on it. Mm -hmm. The right. state of Vermont is starting. Uh, the, their first step is to do a registry, and and that way, if you are doing a long or short term rental, you will need to register it with the state of Vermont. Mm -hmm. um, that way, they can take a look at what they have out there and um, start taking steps towards what they want to do is free up housing so that there are apartments and houses for rent for people that want to live in Vermont all the time. So um, the, 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 there's different entities looking at all of this to see, you know, is this hurting or helping? What is this doing for our state? I think we've got it. Let's wrap it up.